Hi guys, okay, continuing with the Percussion Revolver series. All of you have been following my channel know that I said I was going to be antiquing my 1860 Army fluted cylinder that was made by Uberti because I want to make a McCullough Colt. The only difference that I can see between this gun and the McCullough Colt, which is almost double the price, is the finish. So I'm going to create a McCullough Colt with this. Now, what do I need to do first? Well, I've already sided the gun in. Well, I should say I've taken it out and I've sided it. I figured out what I need to do, how much sight and etc. with the system that we've talked about before. And I have opened up the sight, but I've not cut my cross marks in yet. So I need to put my cross marks in. I need to flat top and notch my front sight like I've talked about to give me the best sight picture because once I strip this finish, and I go to create a antique finish. I don't want to have to mar up that finish by doing it. So any last touches you want to do, do it now. Now, also I've noticed the frame and trigger guard are very smooth. There's a little bit of proud right there on the wood. Right here on the side where the back strap joins the frame, it's a little bit proud. I can hang it with a fingernail. I need to take that off. The other one is pretty close. And on this side, it's nice and smooth, but right there, there's a little bit of a burr. I want to eliminate that. My grip fits well, but any place like right here, you can feel the wood's a little proud. I want to smooth that out. So when I strip the finish, that's when I want to smooth those together. I want it as like a bar of soap when I get done. Likewise, any sharp angle anywhere in here, I want to address now. Now, you notice the case hardening. I've had several people tell me that they're all case hard. No, they're not. Okay. What is case hardening? Case hardening was they would take the metal components and they would put it into a ceramic crucible. And then with powdered charcoal cow bone, they would bring it up to a glowing red heat. The carbon would transfer from the, the charcoal to the, to the frame, increasing the steel content, the carbon content, and making it much harder, a harder form of steel. Nobody in modern industrial society is going to do that. They got kilns for that to make the steel that hardness. It's cosmetic, okay? And moreover, this is applied finish. This is something that is put in and created by chemical means because just as soon as you put it into the uh, vinegar, it goes away. If it was true case hardening, it don't go away. It's a not just a coloring, the metal has become that color. And you gotta sand it to get rid of color case hardening because you gotta get rid of that layer, see. And so it's beautiful and I love the colors on this. And kudos to you, Bertie. They're making a much higher quality product than they were a few years ago. And I'm very impressed with it. But it will strip all of that off. This is a steel back strap. Some of these are actually blue brass. This one I've checked with the magnet is steel. I will antique the brass trigger guard. Now these brass trigger guards have a coating on them. And let's clear this up. They are not brass. They're actually an alloy called, at one time I believe the name was called Gun Metal Number no. 6. It looks like brass, but it's actually a bronze-ish bronze alloy made up of several components. Brass is way too soft and way too expensive. That's the reason they use these. But there's a coating on it. There's a brass content to it. That's the reason it acts the way it does. But what there's a coating on it. Remember in old military when they'd give you your collar brass and you had to get rid of that lacquer? Well, there's like a lacquer on here. So I'm going to remove that and then try to antique it. Make it darker, more aged looking. Same thing. I'm not trying to affect any of the mechanical abilities of the gun. And I'm not trying to fake it and claim it's an original. I will tell you right now, if you follow my techniques and you're trying to antique a gun with the idea of trying to pass it off as original and cash in on payday, you're going to lose. Because the modern replicas are not made the same. They look alike, but there is differences. Enough that any collector worth his salt, certainly one that would pay you big bucks, is going to know the difference. The biggest of which is these screws are European thread, not American thread. And so because of that, they'll know the second they take out a screw, it's not an American screw set. Okay? Having said that, let's 
now get started. I'll be doing that indoors because it's going to be raining at night. When I get home from work, I will work on this. It's going to be a several day project, probably several episodes. So, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to mark in my stuff like we talked about. Put my crossbars on the rear, notch my front sight, and then we're going to fully field strip the gun and put it into the container and strip all the bluing. And that begins now. <laughs> 